Okay, uh, let's start talking about authentication. First thing I will do, I will start putting password and securing them from uh, by using uh, hashes and salts and uh, preventing the routes, uh, preventing exposing them uh, through HTTP requests. Uh, first thing you need to do is to install uh, a, a package called bcrypt. So npm install bcrypt uh, and add types forward slash b b crypt as well but if you are on windows if you are facing some issues by the uh, from the installment um i think it's due to f to some python problems uh, in your machine you can you can use the pure implementation for it which i will use that so it's pcrypt.js and that type pcrypt.js you, you need to install this that uh, you need to install this if you are on windows uh, and you are facing problems. Uh, I will put a link in the description for the two packages so you can see them. So after you install that, uh, we need to update our user entity to have the password. Uh, yeah, I didn't add it before. So what I did, I will I added two columns in the user's utility in the user's entity. Uh, one is called password. One is salt. So you know. Uh, in mod, the way we secure password is uh, hashing them, and to make hash uh, if, is to make hash even harder to break or harder to brute force to find the correct password. We use salt with it. Uh, encryption is a new whole topic, so uh, maybe I can make videos in the future about it. But this is basically the main idea: to provide a salt that will make hashing the password stronger and brute forcing this will be really really hard i think some cases will take like um very very long time uh which is um yeah very long time um yeah and the column is var car for both of them and the length is 500 and the at exclude uh, prevents the rm from returning this uh column which i will show you when we test it in postman so when I get the users, I won't see any password or any column. Even if I get the uh, users that, uh, for example, in the CRUD utilities, uh, have this join with the followers, uh, the, followers the followers is like an alias for the users table. Even in the join relationships, I won't get the password or the salt. So this is good for us to just add the at exclude on each column. But there's another option I will show you to you, which in case you need to customize things a little bit. So, okay, this is the first thing we will do to put the password and the salt and how we can handle them. First thing, I will start by um, putting passwords in the CD class we did in, I think, earlier this series. So first thing, uh, I, will imp I imported the generation gen salt and the hash sync functions from bcrypt jazz uh, bcrypt jazz and i have now this property called salt it's a private type string and when you call the function fake it i will generate the salt so gen salt pretends a promise and this is i think the, iter the number of iterations i believe rounds okay so in the documentation they put 10 so i put it I think the higher the number, the longer this function will run to generate a good salt. So, okay, this is the salt. So I, I will only generate one salt for the fake data run generation, but I think every user, uh, it's not necessarily a good, it's not necessarily the uh, approach, but for each user will, cre have, will be created in our uh, database in the future. I will just generate a new salt and just store it with the user. So the idea, you get the user by the email and compare the password that they provided in the input, hash it first, and then compare it with the originally hashed password you stored in the database. If they if, they, if these two hashed strings matched, the password is correct. That's the that's the idea. That's why we are storing the salt. Um, okay, so nothing changes changes in the fake data unless this uh, nothing changes in the fake data function except this line here, which we store the salt value uh, in the property of the class. 
and then in the user data function uh, the password is hash sync so th this is Cyclonus code uh, all the passwords for the generated fake users is secret so when you try to log of them to generate or generate uh, JWT the password is secret and I'm using the salt and the salt is also, is also the salt so the only thing left to do is to uncomment these so to generate fake data and we might I think we might we can just wait now uh, let me just until the insertion of all the data stops let me go and open the beaver really fast and show you the data oh, how, and how the password will look like one second okay I don't think you can see it uh, so let me hide this code and show the beaver you can now right one second So, so as you can see, let me just, it's, it's really big, I'm sorry, uh, maybe I can do this, Yeah, I think this is good. So, I'm sorry. Ah, now, this is the password. As you can see, it's uh, hashed. So, this is not the word secret, as you can see. And let me like, do this. And this is the salt for each user. So, uh, I, I know I said this before, but uh, when the user fills up the login form with the email and the password. Okay, we will go. For this email, this is the salt okay we will get the salt we will get the password that they typed and hash it again and compare the hashed value from the password they entered with the hash we have if that is correct then the user entered the correct value and this hash will for each new user now when they create an account and enter the credentials will generate a new hash with a salt for each new user so yeah, now we have users, so let's try to query these things in Postman. Uh, so, yeah, one second. Let me open Postman. Okay. So, localhost 3000. Let me send the request. So, we have the data function, uh, the data prop object, and uh, the, the data array, sorry and uh, it's the pagination is always on as usual so here is the pagination stuff and if you look into each object we don't see the password or the salt even even at the nested object which is really really helpful and but uh, let's say for example uh, you want the prop this property to show here uh, you, of course you don't want it to the password but let's say just for the sake of argument uh, let me show you what we can do we can customize the things a little bit more uh, let me return to code and let me uncomment this now we don't need to generate fake data anymore um, in the user controller in the user entity sorry we can remove the exclude now the salt will always return and we can in the query section in the CRUD utilities we can just um, put exclude this column and this by the way will only exclude it from the user's entity and in the relation with the user with the user entity even though we are referencing the same table it won't be excluded here you need to put it explicit, explicitly here so like this now salt but I won't do it just to show you and let me go to postman and send a request so we should see the salt uh, okay so we should see the salt only only in the like in the nested object 
So this is like the festival, no salt, no password. And if you scroll down, you will see we have the salt for each child, you can say. Uh, yeah, this is a way to customize things. But I think, I think if you just uh, stick with the uh, at exclude would be good. And if you want to hide it also here, you can just put it like this. So exclude this column from this relation. This is what this means. Um, and another thing, since we will be creating a hash for the user and assault, uh, we can, which is not supported by the CRUD utilities out of the box. So what we can do is to exclude these two routes, uh, the create one base and the create many base. I think you, the create many base, you want to remove it from, uh, exclude it from almost all CRUD utilities, all controllers that uses the CRUD utilities. And uh, I will exclude these two now. And in, the, in another video, I will add uh, a request. So not here. I will add a request like post create user like this. This is where the user gets created and I will here generate a salt and a hash for it and store it in the database and then return it with the JWT. Uh, so, so this is the main idea. This is how we secure passwords in the database and this is how we prevent them from being exposed through HTTP requests. Uh, I hope this was useful. I will continue doing this authentication. I'll try to make them uh, as good as and as useful as I can. Um, and I don't want to waste time typing everything. So I will just show you the code I wrote and try to explain it. And you can find everything in a repository. I will point the link in the description. Um, I think that's it.